What's going on everybody? This is James with Cards of Ivalice, and we are continuing our Final Fantasy IV playthrough. Uh, last time we left off, we had just received the new airship, uh, the Great Whale, that lets us um, pretty much go to the moon. Um, as ridiculous as that sounds. But anyways, uh, right now... Uh, no, so between uh, the last time I played and now, did some leveling on the moon, um, and a great way to level is because the enemies uh, kind of spike in difficulty, they also give a ton of gil and XP, um, but what you do is you farm, uh, you know, you do the random encounters, and you pretty much just nuke as hard as you can. Uh, with Edge, you do your AoE. Uh, with Rydia, you can do virus summons or your tier 3 elemental spells so on and so forth um, but whenever you need to heal or do whatever or get your MP back you just go into one of these beds for free uh, you can pop out and then rinse repeat so it makes grinding incredibly easy um, that's all there is to it really and it's free on top of that uh, so anywho uh, when you're done doing that this is the spot you will land at you will see the Crystal Palace uh, to the bottom right of the screen and unfortunately you cannot just land there and walk in you have to navigate these system of caves so there is a treasure on the right we're gonna snatch that really quick I believe it's a monster in a box Indra, which should be Ramu. I am not sure how they got that translation going, but... And Jin is Ifri. I don't know if it's Jin because of like a devil Jin, which is D-J-I-N-N. Um, I guess is as good as mine. So free elixir isn't too bad uh, for the time there. And on top of that, uh, got the XP from the fight. Should be another chest to the right. Yep, two chests. Now unfortunately, uh, is a chance that when those green and red alien cre uh, jelly creatures attack you, uh, they have a chance to poison whoever they hit. So, just something to keep an eye out for. Got another cave entrance to the east. truck to the west here which leads to the crystal palace so when we enter here uh, I think there is a HP healing pot to the left or not a pot but like a tile yeah, HP and status recovered and then if you go all the way to the right there's another one that replenishes your MP Which, if you're out here and for some reason you decide you want to start grinding, um, you can do this as well. Go out there, fight, come back, and then uh, recover. But with the the airship, it's much easier. So someone welcomes us into the crystal tower or palace. And we come to find that we are greeted by Fusoya the Lunarian. It's 
So Fusoya kind of lets the group know what the Lunarians are, and he explains that millennia ago there was a planet between Mars and Jupiter that was about to shatter, um, and the people who lived there had to escape, and they headed for Earth. Um, but when they got to Earth, they found out that humans were still like evolving and still had very primitive technology and all that other stuff. Um, so they created the moon and decided to go there instead. So while they were waiting for Earth, uh, all the Lunarians went to sleep, and Fusoya is the guardian of those who sleep. He watches over them and makes sure nothing goes wrong, but he was saying that another Lunarian named Zemus was going against all that and didn't want to listen. Um, so in order to gain his power, he wants to use the Tower of Babel as an energy source, and for that he needs all the crystals. Um, but the main objective being, when the tower activates with all the crystals, it'll summon the Giant of Babel, and it will just like wreak havoc on Earth. Uh, Fusoya, or Cecil exp uh, asks Fusoya, like, who created the, the big whale? How did it come to be? And Fusoya says, my brother Kluya made it in order to travel, you know, to Earth and back. Um, he also taught all the humans how to build airships and the Serpent Road, which is what we use to go from uh, Mysidia to uh, Baron. And then he says, Kluya fell in love with a girl of your blue planet and gave birth to two children, uh, and Cecil is one of them. So now Cecil learns that the voice when he became a paladin, the voice of light, was his father speaking to him. Uh, and the whole purpose of the light uh, is to fight against Zemus when it came down to it. So Fusoya joins, um, and his his whole reason for joining us, um, other than to support Cecil, is um, to break the shield surrounding the Tower of Babel and to allow us to deactivate it. Um, so he has the job Lunar or Lunarian, uh, but he's pretty much, I guess, a sage. Uh, he just has like every uh, white magic, all the white magic spells and all the black magic spells. And with that, we are going to go head back to the Great Whale. There are a couple of side quests you can do um, on the moon. One of them is kind of silly. You can just go to where the naming ways are from, the Hummingway Cave, and you can they you can you can just buy as many. Um, I mean, if you have the gill for it. You can buy elixirs, you can buy ether twos, you can buy all sorts of stuff like just like recovery items. And if you talk, which I can I can show before uh, we leave the moon, if you talk to a specific Hummingway amongst like 20 of them in there, uh, he will sell a whistle that will summon a naming way to you, uh, pretty much whenever. And we got one more cave to go through. Let's see, is anyone about to level? Looks like just Cecil at the moment. So let's just get Cecil a quick level before we uh, head back. fights and yeah I mean he's he comes fully decked out with all the spells like I was saying which he has life 2 
which basically, if someone gets uh, KO'd and he ca and you cast life two on them, they pop up, but they also get all their HP back. It's pretty handy. All right, so we got the level with Cecil. Actually, first thing we're gonna do is save it. We're going to rest up. Now I'll show you the spot where the uh, humming way, naming ways are. It's right to the south. You have to kind of park it near the bottom of this landing. When you talk to most of them, hence the name humming ways, they hum. And there is there's also a naming way. Try to catch one. There he is. So this is the guy that sells the whistle. Um, he also sells cabins. Uh, just pretty much like the late game recovery items. And there's one. There he is. Nope, oh, same guy. My bad. Uh, we're gonna try to find the guy. One of these lets you do the naming way. There it is. Um, which we're not going to do. But anyway, there's that. And then there's also... Which, by the way, if you want to fly around them and you touch the control panel, you do not interact with the crystal. Uh, there is this um, kind of oblong-shaped island here. Um, you will land on the top, go down the, go down the hill area, uh, enter right here. And that is Bahamut's Cave, uh, which we're going to do when, we're, when we return to the moon. We probably could do it right now, uh, but it's not that necessary. So we're going to touch the crystal so that we return to Earth. And as we return, we are immediately prompted into a, a scene. You can't, you can't, you know fly off, do something, you, the game just kind of thrusts you right into this. So, Fusoya says, we're late, the giant has already appeared. giant arrives, which kind of looks like something straight out of like Gundam or something, or like Armored Core or something like that. So all of a sudden you see that there's return fire hitting the giant uh, which, with a bunch of the dwarven tanks rolling in. Now alongside him we see that Yang did not actually perish um, in the tower with the explosion at the gun controls. Uh, and Yang says, I cannot be resting while you're fighting, count me in. And those two fairies next time are actually the Sylph Summon, which you can get as part of a side quest. And then we have a whole fleet of airships arriving. We have Sid and the airship crew from Baron. And the Elder from the city also shows up with a bunch of black and white mages. Uh, and Palm and Porum are here. They say, hey, long time no see. Uh, the Elder removed our petrification and that they all want to help us, because it's basically like a battle for the survival of uh, Earth. Um, Edward has recovered, and he has the uh, soldiers from Tarara helping him out. So pretty much everyone's kind of made it to the scene. So 
So the giant's pretty much distracted from all this like tank and airship fire. And Fusuya says we need to get inside it and destroy its uh, CPU. Um, so Sid lands the airship, picks us up, and we're basically going to go fly like right into its mouth in order to access uh, the insides. Um, this song is pretty much, I think, one of my favorite Final Fantasy songs ever. Uh, I know there's a lot of like heavy metal covers for it, um, all sorts of different variations, but it's such a really good song. So in we go. We successfully make it, and that brings us to the Giant of Babel dungeon. So we're immediately going to go north. Now all the different floors for this dungeon are named after body parts for the giant. We start from the head, and then we're climbing down to the neck, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, there are a couple of annoying monsters here, but for the most part, they're a bit easier than the ones on the moon. So not too much to worry about, but we are going to try to get all the treasure chests that we can find. Actually, let's run away from this one. The giants... So there's that giant, and there are the red giants that are uh, from Bahamut's cave. They tend to do a self-detonate ability, which um, not only hampers your XP intake, um, but they can wipe you out pretty easily. They're just not really worth uh, dealing with. Now, while uh, Fusuya does have a lot of uh, spells in his arsenal, he, his MP count is actually fairly low. Now, kind of like in other dungeons where there, when there is a monster that can summon reinforcements, um, it's pretty handy because the XP just keeps climbing the more they summon things. Like 13,000 XP, and he was summoning pretty easy monsters. Uh, Rydia learns Quake. one of the ancient magic spells along with uh, Flare, uh, Tornado, and I think Flood, um, but I don't like it that much in this game, especially if you're fighting enemies that are flying. are now in the stomach.
treasure chest here to the top right. Some of these cure twos, I don't really need them, just give them one. So I believe a monster in the box. I think it's a searcher, which it usually is with these sort of dungeons. Oh, it's a last arm, which is a type of searcher. Grab ourselves another elixir. I love when it summons the horsemen because they're really easy, uh, but they do get good XP. Definitely cranked out another level for season. Got a save point here. Uh, let's got plenty of cabins. So let's pop one of those off to make sure everyone's topped off with their MP and HP. Gonna save it and continue on. And like that, we get a random encounter. So right now we're in the lung. Took a couple of hits. Let's get everyone going. Now we are about to commence one of the most iconic battles uh, in this game. And with that we see that we have Rubicante, but he is joined by the other four fiends. We have Barbaricia, uh, Cagnazzo, and of course Scarmiglione. Now the, the big thing with this fight is uh, it's not just like a one-on-one -on -one fight. Well, technically, I guess it is because you're fighting them one at a time, but there's no breaks in between. You have to keep fighting them um, consecutively. Which kind of... that whole point... Uh, this whole thing relates to the Golbez card that was in Opus 1, The Legend, um, where if Golbez breaks, you get four... Uh, forwards that come out, which is supposed to represent the four fiends. Uh, so they all say that Zemus uh, resurrected all of them so that they could have another chance to fight, and then Rubicante says that um, because of the last encounter with him, that he has learned to join forces with his allies, just as Cecil has. So in typical gentleman fiend fa uh, fashion, he gets all our HP and MP back, and then we start the fight. With another amazing song, which is called Battle of the Four Fiends. So we're gonna start off with Scarmiglione, who is weak to fire and holy. Now, when we get the chance, we are going to Berserk um, Cecil because him having a, a holy elemental sword, uh, he can just keep going at it as much as he wants. Kusoya and Rosa will support and buff everybody. This should do 9999. Yeah, there you go. Because we're using like a top tier uh, elemental spell that he's weak against. So 
Seas of Haste. That moves us on to Rubicante, to which we will use a uh, start off with Virus. We can use a Blizzard 3 just to, just to inflict a ton of damage. Put Blink on Rydia so she doesn't just get smacked upside the head and lose most of her health. Usually hits like a truck when it's single target, but spread out is about four to five hundred everybody. There's Ice Three doing uh, all nines, and then Riddy is gonna do that again. which we will switch to lightning. So we will do flip three. Now Edge can assist with any of these with his elemental magic. He can do blitz. Um, but it's up to you if you want to melee hit with him or not. Barbaricia, who is weak to Holy, although in this version she seems to take a ton of damage from Lightning as well. And the other thing is they don't emphasize as much that like you have to stop her tornado um, in this fight because you can't, you don't have Kane to jump. Before we move on, we're going to head right back, uh, just so we can use another uh, cabin. We're going to save it, and then we will move on. Upon entering this room, Usoya says this is the core of the giant, the CPU. Uh, we have to destroy the defensive system first or else it will self-repair, which is a clue to the strategy going into this fight. Now the defensive recovery uh, node is the one that just blinked, there, which casts Remedy. It's the bottom right orb. Um, so we're not going to do any heavy nukes, we're not going to berserk, uh, we are just going to kill the defender noon. Now 
Now, if you kill the attacker node, um, the CPU will start going crazy and using an ability that will instantly kill party members. So it's a bit of a slow and steady fight. Uh, they cast a wall on themselves, so you for reflex, so you do not want to uh, use nukes. And if you were to put reflect on yourself a nuke, uh, there is a chance you'll kill the attacker, which will trigger the CPU to go into like a killing frenzy. So if you know exactly what to do, I guess it's kind of a boring fight because you can't do too much to it. You're just meleeing it to death. Um, but, I mean, things get pretty chaotic if you just kind of go crazy and AoE everything and, and new card. Then as soon as the CPU is taken care of, it's just the attacker, and you just uh, you just kill it real quick. still has reflect on it, but we can try. Nope, did not go through. And there goes the CPU, and with that we can just finish off the boss. Thousand XP, not too shabby. Now there was a typo. I kind of went by it too fast because I forgot. Um, but when you blow up the CPU, it's uh, I think Edge Edge says. Uh, that's awesome, we killed it, and then it says, Kane, we did it. And I'm like, well, Kane's not even in the party right now. So Golbez shows up, and he says, you shall pay for ruining my plan. And then Fusoya points him out and says, you. Kind of waddles over them, waddles over to him. And Fusoya says, wake up, and he breaks the spell that was over Golbez. So a big point here is Golbez says, or Fusoya says, snap, you know, like, regain your senses, do you know who your father is? And Golbez says, Kluya, which kind of freaks Cecil out. Uh, so what this means is Cecil and Golbez are brothers, uh, Kluya is their father, and that makes Fusoya their uncle. Um, so Fusoya says, you were controlled by Zemus' te telepathy, um, and your Lunarian blood made it easier for him to use you. So, Gol or, uh, yeah, Golbez says that he's had enough and he's gonna go challenge Zemus on the moon. And that 
Soya is going to join them. Now, in the DS version, there's actually a ton of backstory. Uh, there's like cutscenes and stuff like that where they show that uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, when Cecil is born, um, his mother dies in childbirth, which is what harbors a bunch of animosity from Golbez towards Cecil. Uh, which makes it that much makes it much easier for Golbez to be uh, controlled later on. So with that scene ending, uh, the tower st or the giant starts collapsing. Cecil's still kind of like mind wrecked from learning about Golbez, and then someone yells this way, and Kane has showed up. Now, they're kind of, you know, angry at Kane, but Kane's like, one way or other, the other, you have to get out of here whether you, you know, trust me or not. So with that, we have, we have successfully destroyed the Giant of Babel. And Kane says, at last I was able to regain consciousness. I'm ready to pay the consequences. Um, so even though with all this drama, Rosa says, like kind of have to chill out and it wasn't Kane's fault uh, because he was being mind controlled um, but Kane didn't know either so he just discovered that Golbez was being mind controlled as well uh, so they fill in Kane on what they've learned about the moon how Cecil and Kane or Cecil and Golbez are brothers um, so everyone's just like we have to stop Zemus Um, this part always seemed weird. Uh, Cecil tells Rose and Rydia that they should get off now because it's dangerous and that him, Kane, and Edge are going to go to the moon, but I'm just kind of like with everything they've been through, like now they say it's too risky. Um, but maybe he's just looking out for them or something. Um, so with that, Rydia and Rosa get off the big whale and the party goes to the moon. Now, as soon as you get there again the big whale lands and as you are about to make your approach you find out that Rosa and Rydia were hitching, a, hitching the ride you know the whole time. So then a little smoochy smooch, and then Rydia pops out, and she says, I'm the only summoner you have, you need me, which she's absolutely right about. Um, so we're going to hop in here, take a nap, and this pretty much is, this. we're pretty much at the point of the game where we are at the end game. Um, you can go to the Crystal Palace and head towards Zemus, which is the end of the game. Uh, there are some side quests we can do, which we're going to do right now. Um, for starters, we are going to go back to Earth. Uh, let's see. There is some treasure that we can get from here, which we never uh, picked up. So we can do that real quick. This was the initial, actually I think I went the wrong way. Um, so this is Edge's kingdom, um, but they all evacuated because of what happened. Um, there's a ton of treasure here. I remember how to get to it. in a box with there it is. Yep. Now spells do not work that great on these guys, we're just gonna melee them down. Grab ourselves an elixir. We're gonna go up the left side again.
I always kind of like that. Like, if you spend time exploring in these castles, you could get rewarded. Alright, I think that's enough. Sort our inventory. So not really a side quest, but if you want extra treasure, there's always that. Um, so we're going to move on. Actually, for now, we're going to grab the other airship so that we can go underground. So back to the underground, and if you remember earlier, we had the quest where we were helping the blacksmith out. Um, when you defeat the Giant of Babel, it pretty much triggers the advancement of that quest. So he says he's he, uh, it's all finished. Here's the sacred sword Excalibur, uh, which is an incredibly good sword for Cecil. So it's at 124 and 187. So yeah, giant increase. This vendor or this NPC is now a vendor, and you can buy uh, shurikens and ninja stars from him. So if you have a ton of money, you can kind of load up on those to make some fights a little easier. And we've got a couple of other places we can go to while we're down here. Uh, let's see. So we have to... Uh, interesting how they give King Samurai here. Um, so we gotta cast Float on everybody. Gotta do this again. So that we can make it down to the city. So we also see some hit. I mean, yeah, easy 2500 on these guys. Most of the treasure chests from our last journey down here. Gotta level up for edge. So we've arrived back into the Summoner City, and our goal here is to talk to the King and Queen of the Summons, which is Leviathan and Asura. Now we're going to use the tent real quick and then save it. go to the library, um, there's all sorts of little tips that are put here. It talks about Ifrit, uh, talks about Titan, um, yeah, all the different summons, but there are a few that um, kind of give you a hint uh, to other summons that you haven't run into yet. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Uh, you have the Sylphs here, which says they ignite their power to unleash, un unleash potent magic. Here you have Odin, a knight with a sharp blade. Uh, he was once he was beaten only once when lightning struck his sword, which kind of clues you in that if you were to engage uh, Odin, that he is weak to lightning. Now there it said that Asura is the queen and Leviathan's the king, but in order to see the true, true form of the king, you have to meet the queen. 
It says, our true master, the king of the summoned monsters, created us. He watches, of, he watches over us from afar. Um, now, I believe the correct translation is supposed to be the god of the summoned monsters. Which is Bahamut from the moon, and it says the only way to beat him is to reflect back his power. So you're supposed to use the spell Reflect. Uh, it says long ago a great whale descended from the moon, which alludes to uh, the great whale. And here we have the king and queen. Now, the king won't even talk to you unless you beat. So Rydia welcomes, or uh, the Queen welcomes back Rydia, and Rydia says, we need your help, and she says, I am willing to, but first you must you must be worthy, do you have the courage to face me? So of course we do, and the key strategy for this is, um, she has insane healing powers, which will keep her pumped up, um, and the way you get around that, besides beating her down, um, is you need to cast Reflect on her so that when she heals herself, uh, it'll bounce back and heal your guys. Such as that. Now, if the damage, if the fight goes on for too long, the reflect will wear off, and you have to reapply it. Uh, but other than that, at this point, you just go crazy. Uh, you go melee with your three melee guys, obviously. Um, Rydia can melee as well, although she can't reflect summons, so you can do that as well. And Rosa will just keep everyone healthy. Now there are things like that, like where she casts life on herself, and I'm kind of wondering why would that be programmed? Like, why would she ever cast life on herself? So Asura says, Rydia, you have fine and brave friends. You can now summon me whenever you need my help. Um, she is a support summon. Uh, she can do a heal. She can cast rays or life on everyone. And if it's the orange face that shows up, I believe, uh, it's like an insane heal. It's like 7,000 heal for the entire party. Uh, so before we engage with Leviathan, uh, we're going to heal everyone, and then I... Let's see. Let me use some ethers for Rosa. So the strategy with Leviathan, on the other hand, uh, do, well, first he goes, you're the first ones to defeat the queen, but strength alone is not enough to counter evil. Uh, you must have an even stronger will to guide your powers towards good. Uh, will you challenge me? You will, and with that you can hear a tidal wave rolling in. Um, he is weak to lightning since he is water based. Um, so we'll basically be doing water or uh, uh, lightning attacks, physical attacks, and then recovery. Now you may be tempted to summon uh, Ramu, but the summoning takes a lot longer than it does just to cast uh, Lit 3 or Virus. So you kind of want to stick with that. So 
So as he faces the right, he's going to do Tidal Wave again, or Big Wave. Uh, so we have a heal already preemptively ready. Now on Rydia's, or Rosa's next turn, we're going to cast Haste on Rydia so that we get these out pretty fast. If he's not the which he is. Sure is the power of light, Leviathan says. I, the master of the summoned monsters, uh, will be your help from now on. And with that, we are done with here. Um, so in this playthrough, I may do it uh, like as a post uh, thing, you know, after we finish the game. This is the Sylph Cave. Uh, you, there is some treasure in there, like cabins and gill. Uh, you can also get the another rat tail, which you can get the rat tail from there instead of the Summoning Cave in, or, in order to do the quest for Excalibur. Um, and there is also, it's not a fight, but when you go there, if you have the spoon from Yang's wife, you whack him in the head with it and it wakes him up from his recovery slumber, which doesn't seem that, that nice actually. Um, but with that, you get the Sylph Summon, uh, which is another recovery summon. Uh, so right now we're going to head to Baron. So we don't need this airship anymore. Let's swap rides real quick. Save our game. Actually, let me get all my MP back. This thing is so handy. Alright, with that, we're gonna go into the castle. Get to the right. I don't remember if it's down here. No, that's where the treasure is. It's on the right side of the castle, but not in this room. So we're going to go to where the airship mechanics used to be. There's some treasure here. Now, we could have gotten all these tents and ethers and all that earlier, but... It's alright. Better late than never. So, for this treasure chest, when you approach it, it's like, oh, I can't get to it when I go downstairs. If you go back upstairs, don't move, just immediately face north. There you go. And with that, we have this path here. Don't forget to check that second pot for an elixir. Now, if you approach this room earlier in the story, um, the king of Baron, who has just greeted us, will tell you that you need Rydia in your party in order to interact. Because he is a summon. He says, don't be so sad, the monster got to me, but I've gained the eternal powers to help you. Uh, the Caller of Mist can summon me whenever you please, but I first must test you. This entire battle is all about speed and damage, just how much raw damage you can put out. So we learned earlier that he's weak to lightning. So Edge is going to be doing Blitz, Radio will do Blitz 3, Kane is going to melee because Jump is just a bit too slow, and although Odin does attack you, uh, we are going to use Rosa to cast Haste on people. I would say once you get haste on like Cecil and Rydia, which he's knocked out, but on one note, you can do this quest way earlier on. Uh, I'm way over leveled for it. 
Uh, you probably want to get haste on Ridian Cecil and then you can start healing. Uh, so the King of Baron says you have grown, the world is dependent on you, and I shall fight with you as Odin. Um, so Odin is okay. He's not handy in boss fights or anything. But basically, if you're if you're if you're leveling up and you're grinding monsters, uh, he has a chance to just instantly uh, kill all the monsters in the fight. another 10 that I remembered we have this. Now due to the timing we did miss out on the spoon uh, throwing weapon. Basically uh, when you first go to the underground, you come back, you talk to Yang's wife, and she's worried sick that you tell her what happened to Yang. Um, you then go into the Sylph Cave, you find Yang, and then when you tell his wife, she says, No, 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 like, wake him up with this, and, like, everything will be fine. So, you do that, and, and you get the Sylph Summon, and when you go back to Fabul, um, Yang's wife will get you a throwing weapon, a one-time use, uh, for Edge, which does 9,999. Um, just kind of slipped to my mind as we were like progressing through the game. Other than that, uh, we can go back to the moon. And we will park right outside here so we can access Bahamut. Now this episode's been going on for quite a while, so we are going to take a break here. Uh, right outside Bahamut's lair. And on our next episode, we are going to obviously go into Bahamut's lair and take care of that, and then we will venture forth into uh, the lunar subterrain, which is uh, Zemus's lair, and we will start exploring and getting the legendary items for everybody, uh, getting the best gear in the game. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching as we approach the end of this playthrough, and we will see you next time.